Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, family. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Faith Talk and Miracle Moments. There is a miracle with your name on it. Yes. Welcome, 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 welcome. Let me know where you're watching from. As you join, don't watch alone. I want you to um, share this broadcast. Invite more people. Let them know that God has a miracle for everyone today. Amen. Let me know where you're watching from. When I see you, I'm going to acknowledge you. But first and foremost, I want you to love. I want you to like. I want you to subscribe and share this broadcast. This is Faith Talk and Miracle Moment. I have a word from God for you today. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for joining me. Don't watch alone. Love, like, share. Bring more people on. I'm trying to do the same thing right here. And when I see you, I'm going to acknowledge you in a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, keep liking, keep sharing. I have a word. We're going to get into the word in a minute. Let me do that on this. I'm live on my Facebook page. I'm live on HOD Radio. I'm coming to you live today with a word from God on how to get everything you ever wanted. <laughs> That's going to be very powerful, very explosive session today. Your life will never remain the same again. There is a miracle with your name on it. This is Fit Talk. I want you to like and share. Let me just put that to you here. Yeah, like and share, and then we're going to get into the world in a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Let me know where you're watching from. When I see you, I'm going to recognize you. Keep sharing, keep liking. I want you to, I want you to like. I'm doing the same thing right here on my other handles. Then we're going to get into the word. Let's get that out of the place. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I give you praise. Thank you for my friends that is my friend that is watching today. Thank you for this person. Thank you for the miracle you are scheduled for this person right now. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Do great things. Yes. Lord, I give you praise. I worship you. Let me know where you're watching from. I think I can see some of you already on. When you share it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to know that. Then I'm going to be able to welcome you. This is Faith Talk and Miracle Moment. Love, share, like, you know, let many more people know we are live. I want to talk to you about how you can get everything you ever wanted. All right. I can see you now. Let me begin to, let me begin to recognize you. I see my wife. She said, hello, love. Yes, I see Justin Gilmer. Where are you watching from, Justin? Uh, let me know where you're watching from. Okay, I see Oliver Coglan from Ireland. Beautiful. Oh my God. All right, I see a uh, woman of God, Pastor Yemi. See, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Amen. Yes, Gilmer said he's watching from. Um, Where's that now? Gilmore is watching from Belvi in Illinois. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Gilmore. I also see David Mali from Kenya. Oh, my God, my God, my God. God has a miracle with your name on it. This is Fit Talk. Like and share. I want to talk to you today about how you can get everything you ever wanted. <laughs> That's what God wants me to talk to you about, you know. Everything you ever wanted, how you can get everything you ever wanted, how you can live, you know, your life without any lack, any want. It's possible, and I'm going to show you from God's word how, you know, all your needs can be met, all your desires can be granted, all your expectations can be exceeded. So I don't want you to watch alone. I want you to like, I want you to share. I'm going to get in the world in a minute. I don't have no time to, I mean, to delay. I want to get quickly into this, but I want you to share this broadcast and bring more people on. This is Faith Talk and Miracle Moment. I'm live on um, my Facebook page. I want you to follow me at Bishop O. Olafe. Like my Facebook page at Bishop O. Olafe. I'm also live on um, YouTube. If you want to subscribe, that's the that's the button there. You can subscribe at um, Household of Faith for All Nations. I'm also live on uh, Twitter. If I see, I mean, you might be watching on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Bishop Olafe. Yes. So I'm live right there. I want you to follow me and I want you to get ready. I want to talk to you today. Glory be to God. I want to talk to you today about 
Uh, this is Faith Talk, actually. This is Faith Talk and Miracle Moment with Bishop O. Olafe. I want to talk to you about how you can get everything you ever wanted. That's very powerful. That's a bold uh, message, but it's coming from the heart of God directly to you because it is possible, it is available, it is obtainable. You don't have to lack anything in your life. And I'm going to show you the secret to having everything you ever wanted. Thank you, Father. Can I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this sacred moment, this miracle moment. As we look into your word, I pray that you will bless, you will speak to this person watching right now. Give this person a miracle. Lord, let this person's need be supernaturally met from today. Let this person have no need and no lack anymore in his or her life. I give you praise for what you are said to do. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Yes, that's what we want to look at today. How to get everything you have ever wanted. I think I see some more joiners here. Let me see. Okay. I think I see Asher. Asher, where are you watching from? I think that's Pakistan. Let me know where you're watching from. I guess that's Pakistan. Yes. Okay. I see Awa there. When I see you, I'm going to bring you on. Yes. I want to talk to you about how to get everything you ever wanted. Yes, you're saying, is it possible? It is not only possible, it will become your own reality from today. There is nothing you want. There is nothing you desire to get that will elude you. If you open up your heart and pay attention to what I'm going to be passing across to you in this few uh, moments. I, I started this broadcast actually last week and I was able to outline why most people don't already have what they want. I will encourage you to go through the last week broadcast. I'm not going to go through that anymore. I want to just go ahead right now and begin to pick some things that you may want in your life and see, you know, but the foundation, the foundation that is very important for you to have today is that God, you need to recognize before I begin to tell you how to get everything you, uh, you ever wanted, there is a source there is a source for everything you can want in your life. And what is that source? God is the source of you, our total supply. There is nothing you want that God can make happen for you. There is nothing you want that God cannot supply. We must recognize God as the source and supplier of everything you ever wanted. Because the Bible tells me, listen to this, once you don't have a source, you don't have an assurance. The, the, the reason people don't have what they want is because they don't recognize their source. If you don't know where to get it, that will become the reason for doubt, you know, anxiety, worry in your life. But once you know where to get what you want, once you recognize the source, if I want to get gas in my car, for instance, I won't fret because I know that anytime I want gas, all I need to do is to go to a gas station. And I will come out, you know, with a full tank, you know. So whatever you want has a source. The reason, the challenge most people have is they don't recognize the source. Or maybe they don't even like the source. But I'm going to show you today that God is important for you. This is the foundation that God is the source of our total supply. God is the source and the supplier of everything that you and I can ever want in our life. Because it says every good and every perfect gift, every good and every perfect gift comes from God. Every good thing comes from God. And God is ready and willing to supply all your needs. That's Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. It said, my God, shall supply. So you have a source, a ready source, you know, uh, a source that can never dry up. <laughs> if God is your source, it's an unlimited source. God is an unlimited source and there is nothing God cannot do. There is nothing too hard for God and God is your supplier. He can supply everything you want. I'm laying a foundation because it's important we get this foundation right as I share with you today on how you can get everything you ever wanted. Okay, I think I see some new joiners. Let me get them on. Share this broadcast. Bring more people on. God has a word for you. I think I see 
Um, yes, I see Lin, Lin, is that Linda Nell from, yeah, Linda Nell, Baltimore. Thank you for joining. I see you there. I also see uh, Brother Tim. Oh, good to have you, Brother Tim. God bless you. Thank you for joining. If you have not shared this broadcast yet, I want you to share it. Bring more people on. Yes, now, let me keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to keep going, you know. So the first thing we need to recognize is that there is a source for everything you ever, there is nothing you want that, that doesn't exist. <laughs> and the only thing that God can make happen is what, you know, you don't desire. But God can do all things. God can supply all your needs. So we have to recognize God as, as your source. The, you know, the reason people don't have what they want, I talked about that last week, and I don't want to go back into that. The reason, but I think I should mention something here. You know, people don't already have what they want because they don't want to recognize the source, God as the source of their total supply. That's a foundational def defect. If you don't recognize God who made all things as the source of everything you want, then you're already going to live in doubt and unbelief. But once you go to God, you're going to believe that God can supply. God can make it happen. God can do it. There is nothing that God cannot do for you. There is nothing too hard for God. There is nothing impossible for God to do. So, but now what I want to do today is to take you through uh, different things and see. Let me start with this. Let me start with this. What if there is a power that can get you all things that you want in your life? Would you connect to that power? If there is a power, if I tell you now that, look, there is a power source to getting everything you want because you need the power to get things done. You need the power to get things done. Everything you need to get done in your life requires a form of empowerment. So if I tell you that, look, what if there is a power that can get you everything you want? Would you connect to that power? Because sometimes, even though the power is available, some will not connect with the power to get what they want. But the good news is that there is a power and the power is available here in scripture, and I want to show you what the power is. There is a power that can get you everything you want. That power is in, you can see that power in Second Peter chapter 1. I'm a man of God, so I'm going to speak to you from the Bible. You see, the Bible, oh, I love this. The Bible, watch this. God, you know, will show you the path of life. It says, God can show you the path, what you need is the path, the way to everything you can ever get, you know? And I believe that today, in the name of Jesus, your struggles will end. Your, your lack and insufficiency will come to an end. Your, you know, the delay, the things you don't have will become easily accessible in your life from this moment. You know, the psalmist said, you know, uh, I love God's presence because in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And God also shows us the path of life. There is a path to everything you want. Like now I'm talking to you about the power that can get you everything you want. Look at what the Bible says here. There is a power. There is a power. Somebody said there is a power. There is a power that can get you everything you want. In 2 Peter chapter 1, let me read that scripture to you. 2 Peter chapter 1, it says, according as his divine power watch this according as his divine power has given unto us all things according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness all things so there is a power that can give you all things that you that pertains to life, all things, all, all. I mean, I don't know what all means if it doesn't mean everything. All things that pertains to life. So there is a power that can give you all things that pertains to life and godliness. 
So what is that power? It says his divine power is a supernatural power. The power is ability, the ability of God, the influence of God, the authority of God, the capacity of God. All things, all things you may ever desire in your life, all things, whether it is material things, physical things, financial things, emotional things, all things that you can ever desire. There is a power of God that can give you all things. May that power begin to find expression in your life from this moment. I pray and I prophesy that you're going to connect with that power. And I'm going to show you how you can unleash that power. That's what I want to do. I want to, you know, break these things down for you so that you can, you, so that you can get everything you ever wanted. So there is a power and it's called the divine power. There is a power that can give you all you want. It's called the divine power of God. It's the power of God, the power of God that can do all things. The things which are impossible for men, they are possible with God. The things which are too hard for men to do, God can do it. I think it was Jeremiah that had an encounter with God. And he said, oh God, you are the Lord. Is there anything too hard for you? Is there anything too hard for God? The God of all flesh. There is nothing too hard from God. And the good news is that God will not withhold any good thing from you. Anything that will make your life to be enjoyable, to be pleasant, whether it is prosperity, whether it is uh, material things, anything you want. God is not holding back anything from you. But you have to recognize him as the source of your total supply, and you have to believe in his ability. God's power, God's capacity will make things available in your life. Look at it. So how does this power, how does this power work? Let me tell you how you get this power. For you to have this power of God working in your life, you need to receive Jesus. That's the foundation for this reality. You need to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Jesus is the channel, is the way to God. There is no way you can get anything from God except through Jesus. Yes, but when you go to Jesus, the Bible said, as many as received Jesus, to them gave he power to become. Whatever you want to become, you want to become successful, you want to become prosperous, you want to become rich, you want to get married, you want to become healed, as many as receive Jesus, to them he gave power to become. So the channel, the, 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 the way to God, the God of all power, is through Christ. In my last teaching, I said some people don't have what they want because they, they don't want to accept. They are unwilling. They are unwilling to get it the right way. They are going about it the wrong way. You know, the, the, the Bible says there is a way that seemed right to a man, but they are fruitless. They are futile. There is, there, you know, you can think there are other ways. Oh, I can get what I want without God. That's the reason for frustration. If you don't have Jesus in your life, you are not on the right way. But if you have Jesus, if you come to Christ, Jesus said, no one can come to the Father except through me. That's the first thing we're looking at today. So Jesus is the way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You can't get anything from the Father except you go through Jesus. So the, what you need to get everything you ever want is, number one, to accept Jesus Christ into your heart and as your Lord and Savior. Now, let me tell you something, because some of you might be watching now who already have Jesus in your life, and you say, oh, but I have Jesus in my life. How come I don't have anything or everything I ever wanted? Listen, once you get Jesus in your life, that's the first thing, then you need a knowledge, a working knowledge of your relationship with God. You need to know the, you need to know the God that you have believed. You need to know the God. You need to have a revelational knowledge, a personal relationship with God.
to know him as your God. I love what Apostle Paul said one time, you know, he said, I know him whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he's able, is able to keep, to do, to bring to pass everything he has told me. So you see, once you establish a relationship, you need to develop that relationship to the point where you know God and you can trust him. You know, some people have a relationship, but they don't even know who they are related to. <laughs> I've, I've had people, you know, married couples. I've had mar people who are married and they say, look, I'm married to this man or married to this woman. I've been married for years, but I don't even know this person. So it's, it's, it's possible to establish a connection which is what happens when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. You establish a connection with God. But it is important that you grow in your knowledge of him, to know him. It says, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life, through the knowledge of him that has called you to glory and virtue. So you have to continue to grow to yearn to know God more, to know what, who, what he does, how he does what he does. Listen to this. God has ways. God has ways. So you have to know his ways. You have to know his ways. In fact, in Isaiah 55, he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. As the heaven is higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts and my ways higher than your ways. So God has his ways. So for you to be able to, you know, to receive and walk in the power, you have to know the ways of God. You have to know his ways. You have to know him. Apostle Paul said, I know him. There are many who profess to be Christians who don't know God. They, yeah, they have established a relationship with Jesus. They have been converted, but, you know, um, they have confessed, but they have not developed, they've not cultivated their relationship with Jesus. I'm only saying that, you know, you can, for those who already know Jesus, what do you need next is to get to know him. That was Apostle Paul's greatest prayer in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. Apostle Paul's ultimate prayer is Lord, that I may know him, that I may know him, that I may know him, the, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. So to know God, to experience his power, you have to fellowship with him. You have to spend time in his word. You have to spend time reading his word because God has revealed himself in his word. Yes, in his word, you will know how to, you know, to get what you want. The power will be available. You know, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. And the Bible says, you shall know the truth. What is God? What The truth is God's word. What is God saying about what you want? What has God said about your desire? The Bible says, they that do know their God, Daniel eleven thirty two, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. Those who know their God. Your strength comes when you know him. You know, you're going to know, when you know him, you're going to know that one, he cannot lie. God cannot lie. So if he gives you a promise and you fulfill the conditions of the promise, whatever he promised will come to pass. You're going to know that God cannot fail because he has never failed. He has no record of failing. God cannot fail. God cannot lie. You know, and there is nothing that is impossible with him. You have to know him to know these characteristics of God. So there is a power. That's the first thing. There is a power that can get you everything you want. It's called the divine power of God. And you need a relationship with God, uh, with Jesus. You need, to, you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
to establish a relationship with God because Jesus is the mediator between God and man. Jesus is the mediator between God and man. You can't assess anything from God until you have a relationship with Jesus. That's why Jesus is not, you know, uh, following Jesus is not a religion. It's a relationship. It's a pathway to God, to receiving everything you want from God. Then they still talking about the power. How can the power work? The power will work when you know God, when you begin to know him. You need to know who he is, how his ways, what he does, how he does what he does. You know, I think in Psalms, when God began to take the children of Israel out of Egypt, taking them to the promised land, the Bible says he made his ways known to Moses, but his acts to the children of Israel. There is a difference between the ways of God and the acts of God. Those who know the ways of God can command the acts of God. But if you don't know the ways of God, you can only experience his acts. And when his acts are not lining up with your desire, then you can be frustrated, you can give up, you can be discouraged, you can lose hope. But if you know the ways of God, then it is easy for you to be able to receive the power that will flow through you when you know the ways of God. You know, I think there was a story in the Bible, somebody close to Jesus called Lazarus. He died and they sent for Jesus and Jesus delayed. It took three days before he got to where the person that died was. But when Jesus finally got there, they told him that, look, Lazarus had been dead for four days and he had been buried. And Jesus said, oh, don't worry, it's going to rise again. The two sisters of Lazarus, one of them said, well, I know he's going to rise again in the last day, in the day of resurrection. So she believed in the God of resurrection in the last day, but she didn't believe in the God of now. But her sister, uh, Mary, one of the sisters said, Jesus, I know that if you have been here, my daughter, my, my brother would not have died. But even now, even now, I know that whatsoever you shall ask God, he will give it to you. So you see, she knew Jesus and she knew that Jesus had a, re a living relationship with God that even at that moment, even though the guy has been dead four days, she knew that with the kind of relationship Jesus had with God, that story is not too late. It can still turn around. It can still change. So you need to know that even now, what at every point in time, that God is not a man that he should lie, that God is the source of your total supply, that God delights in your well-being, and that whatever you want from God, he will make it happen for you because God is a now God. God is a now God, and you need to relate with God, not as a distant future God, but the God that is present in your now. You have to know some things about God. That The unfortunate thing is that a whole lot of people don't know God. They only know what people say, you know. You cannot know God except you spend time with him. Spend time in his word. Spend time in prayer. Prayer is not just a place to go and request for things. Prayer time is the time you use in pursuing God, cultivating a relationship. So you can know his voice. You can, he said, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. So I'm talking to you because I want to go further, but I'm telling you how the power can flow. You know, he said, wherever the word of a king is, there is power. But you have to recognize his voice. How do you know his voice? You have to spend time with him in prayer and in study of the word of God and in meditating on the word of God. So you can have power and I prophesy and I pray that that power of God, that power of God that can, you know, that can give unto you all things that pertains to life and godliness will begin to flow into your life. Receive that power now. I say receive that power of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me take you to another thing here. Let me take you to something else here. Yes, what, this is the question again. What if you can live, this is another one now. What if you can be rich and live a sorrow-free life? What if you can be rich? I mean, 
how to get everything you want. Maybe what you want is not power, you want riches. What if you can be rich and, and live a sorrow free life? Would you want that? Yes, but the good news is that you can. You can be rich and you can live a sorrow free life. How can you be rich? God wants you to be rich. You can be rich, yes, and live a sorrow free life. How can you be rich and live a sorrow free life? I will give you a scripture here. Look at what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. Look at it here. It says, the blessings of the Lord, the blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich. <laughs> so you can be rich. How can you be rich? The blessings, the blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich. And it added no sorrow with it. My God, my God. So for you to be rich, what you need in your life is to assess the blessings of God. The blessings of the Lord will make you rich. You see, like I said in my last teaching, the reason people don't have what the reason people don't have what they want is because they are going about it the wrong way. They are going about it the wrong way or they refuse to accept. This is one of the things I said. They refuse to accept the truth on how to get what they want. You see, I'm saying to you that it's the blessings of the Lord that make rich. But you might, some people don't accept the truth on how to get it. You might think that there are other ways to be rich. Yeah, there could be other ways. But it says here, the blessings of the Lord it makes rich and added no sorrow. Stress-free riches. You can have it. It can be yours. Yes, you can have, you can be rich and live, you know, a stress-free life, a sorrow-free life. It's possible. How? Through the blessings of God. Let me give you another scripture here. Um, look at it here. In Psalm, the blessings of God, the blessings of God. In Psalm 112 from verse 1 to 3. Oh, this is very beautiful. My God, my God, my God. Watch this. In Psalm 112 verse 113. I'm a man of God, so I, I, I teach you from God's word. It says, praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. It says, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. It says, wealth and riches shall be in his house. Wealth and riches. Wealth and riches. So God is not holding back wealth and riches from you. So what if you can be rich and live a sorrow free life? So how do you get it? How do you get these blessings of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow? It says, look at the condition there. In Psalm 112, I'm taking it, I'm taking you through it. This is how you get God to bless you and make you rich. It says, number one, you have to fear God. You have to fear God. You have to fear. You see, fear of God will make you rich. The fear of the Lord. It says, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. That means you have to reverence him. You have to honor him. You see, you can't ignore God and not have value for him or regard, high regard for God and expect him to make you rich. So the key to receiving these riches is to fear God, to fear God. It, say, it says, the man that feared the Lord, that's the first thing. Fear means also another word for fear of God means to love God, to love him. If he's the source, if he's the source of your total supply, if he's the one that wants you to wants you to be rich, you need to love him. Once you love God, then he will give you the secret to the, the riches. He said the riches, the hidden riches of the earth. God, you know, he said the secret things belong to God, but the things which are revealed, they belong to us and to our children. The secret thing. So there's a secret. He said he will give you the hidden treasures of the hidden riches of secret places. You see, nobody can reveal his secret to you if you don't respect that person. 
if you don't regard the person, if you don't regard God, you can't have access to God's secret. So once you love God, the first thing is to fear him, to love him, to regard him. Then it said here also that you delight greatly in his commandment. You have to delight in his command, his instructions. Once he tells you what to do, you have to be happy doing it. If you don't delight in his in his commandment, you can't experience the blessing that will make you rich. You see, I'm speaking to you, and this is the reason people don't have what they want. I said, I think in my last teaching, I said people are more interested in going through the motion, through the process. They don't like the result. It's not like people, because if you want to be rich, this is the secret to be rich. This is the secret here. To be rich, to have all the kind of riches you want. There is nothing more than this. Nothing, nothing. If you if you if you if you if you fear the Lord, if you love him, if you delight greatly in his commandment, he said, Wealth and riches shall be in your house. Is that not what people claim they want? Wealth and riches to be in their house, but they don't want to, they don't want to follow the, the way. They don't they, they they don't they don't want to accept the truth, they don't want to walk in the way. They don't want to walk in the way. They're unwilling to pay the price. They're willing to do every other thing, but the right thing. But I'm praying for you today. I'm praying for you today that everything you want, you will get it. That the blessings of the Lord that makes rich and add no sorrow will be evident in your life. You will be so rich, you don't know what to do with yourself. You will be so blessed, you don't know what to do with the wealth. <laughs> receive that power receive the grace to assess that wealth i'm giving you the secret another 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 um if you look at Deuteronomy chapter number Deuteronomy chapter 28 it says there again this is this is i'm talking to you how you can be rich the key it said in Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 to 3 it says if you will hearken diligently to the voice of the lord your god to observe, to do his commandment, which he command you this day. He said, all the blessings you want, they shall come on you and overtake you and overflow in your life. The Lord will bless you above all nations. You can be blessed and be rich so that even nations will come and be borrowing from you. But what is the secret? The secret is, if you will hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Yes, and that's that's simple. That's the simplest and easiest thing anybody can do. You know, most times I'm just amazed. You know, most times I'm just amazed on how, you know, people look or despise the thing that can make them rich. And they are doing many things and they are frustrated. <laughs> I'm just amazed. I used to be like that. But I found out that, look, there is the path of life. There is a path to wealth. There is a path which has not been, many have not embraced. You know, I think it was Job. He said, there is a path which no vulture known, which the lions have not tread upon. There is an excellent way to be rich. And that means you just have to hearken to God. The mother of Jesus told them one time when they went to uh, a wedding and they began to run, to run out of wine and embarrassment was coming. Shame was inevitable. And they cried to Jesus. They cried to the mother. The mother said to them, whatever he tells you to do, do it. That's so simple. A whole lot of people miss it. You see, God, the blessings of the Lord, it make it rich. But the blessings of God is reserved for those who hearken to the voice of his command. If you shall hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do what he tells you to do. He said, all these blessings, you will be blessed going out, Blessed coming in, you'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, you'll be blessed, the fruit of your body shall be blessed, your storehouses shall be blessed, 
all that you have will begin to reflect and to smell the blessing. You're going to begin to, you know, ooze out blessings of wealth in your life. But the simple key is to obey God and to delight greatly in his commandment. Love God's instruction for your life more than anything else. And you're going to be rich. You're going to be rich so cheaply you, you can't believe it. <laughs> Glory be to God. Oh, let me take a breather here. Let me take a breather for a minute. Let me see who is watching. And let me also, you know, encourage you to get some of my books. I want to, let me take a breather. I'm going to continue the message in a minute. Let me just, you know, uh, see who is watching. And then I want to encourage you to get some of my books. Glory be to God. This is Faith Talk and Miracle Moments. If you are just joining me, thank you for joining me. And thank you for staying with me. Let me know how this message is blessing you. You all are enjoying it. I'm not seeing your comment. I want to see your likes. I want to see your love. Give me thumbs up if you are enjoying this word. Let me know, you know, this is this is very powerful. I want to encourage you to get some of my books. I'm going to continue the message in a minute. Uh, but I want to encourage you to get some of my books. Let me take a breather here. Um, I have some books I want you to get on Amazon.com. Or if you visit our, uh, our website, Hoffman.org, you're going to get the books. God will fix it. Very powerful book. If there are things you want God to fix in your life, this book, when you read it, you're going to see, you're going to receive impartation and going to receive the help of God to fix whatever you want to see fixed in your life. It's available. It's an, these are ebooks. You don't have to wait for me to mail it. You can just download them when you go to Amazon.com or our website, Hoffman.org. Glory to God. Watch this one here. Go forward. I recommend this book for you. If you want to make unstoppable progress, go forward. It's a book that will propel you and jumpstart you and begin to, you know, nudge you forward into the greater things that God has for you. It's also available on Amazon.com and Hoffman.org. Go get the book. They are very powerful. Go forward. Then there's another book here. Healing is the children's bread. Oh, I love this. This is for your divine health and healing. You don't want to be, you will not be sick another day in your life. But you can, you know, you can know how to live in divine health. I'm even going to talk about something from this book in a minute. I'm going to tell you how you can live in divine health, how you can stay healthy. You know, you don't have to be scared of any disease. It doesn't matter how many people are falling sick. God can exempt you. God can shield you and God can heal you. Get this book. It will be a blessing to you. Glory be to God. Healing is the children's bread available. Oh, this is a prayer manual here. Prayers that work wonder for increase. Prayers that work wonder for increase. God wants to increase you more and more. You can, God wants to increase you. It's God that gives it you the increase. So by reading this book, you're going to receive, it's a prayer manual. You're going to receive prayer topics. You know, people pray, but they don't even know how to pray. They pray wrong. They don't pray right because they don't pray with the right prayer topics. If you want increase in your life, you can pray with this book and you're going to experience increase. Get it on amazon.com and orphan.org. You're going to, it's a prayer manual with topics that you can use for your prayer. Glory be to God. Then here, here goes this powerful nugget here. I love the nugget series. Seven ideas that can revolutionize your life. Seven ideas that can revolutionize your life. It's available also on amazon.com you know one for each day this is to inspire you this is a this is a you know it's a little book easy read it's just one idea per day to inspire you motivate you and spur you on so that you can begin to you know ideas rule the world if you this is how when you read the content in this little book you're going to begin to get inspired inspired and motivated you know uh to get to receive ideas one idea is all you need to change your world and that idea will hit you in the name of jesus christ so get these books there are also a lot of other books there if you go to amazon.com you can get you know um wisdom for profitable living you know prayers that open up the mind for creativity seven seven ways to solve problems seven success secrets for the believer seven ways to make more money Seven things to do when disappointment happens. Lots of other books there. So go there and get these books. It will be a blessing to you. Glory be to God. Let me leave that on for a minute as we go into. Thank you for uh, being with me. This is Faith Talk and Miracle Moments with Bishop O. Olaofe. You can also connect with me one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. If you want me to pray for you, you want me to give you a prophetic word, you know, you can connect with me at any time. 
You want a personal prophecy. You want a biblical guidance. You want a Rema word. You can inbox me. You can text me. You can email me. You know, you can connect with me. That's the information on the screen. You can inbox me on Facebook. You can um, text me, you know, text the word love to that number on your screen. Then you're going to connect with me. I can send some, you know, I can give you personal prophecy, biblical guidance, give you your Rema word, or you can email me, info at orphan.org. That's the way to, to keep in touch with me. Glory be to God. So let's go, let's continue um, this powerful uh, message right now. Then let me show you some other things that I believe that God wants to do in your life. Let me see. Let me know where you're watching. Okay. I think some other people, I have some new, some people just joining. Uh, Sister Joy Ann is on. Praise God for that. Good to have you. Let me know where you're watching from. And if you're just joining, share this broadcast one more time. If you have not done that, let's share it again. Let's do another round of sharing so that many more people can be blessed because God is still moving. So let's share one more time. Please take time out to share. Share it, share it, share it one more time. Share the broadcast. Take time to share it again. I know you have shared it before, but share it again. This is the second half. I want to take you into some other things that, you know, God can do in your life. So take time out to share the broadcast. Yes, love, like, and share, and then God will bless you in Jesus' name. Okay. Thank you, Father. Let me continue with this powerful word. I'm talking to you today on how to get everything you ever wanted, how to get everything you ever wanted. Everything you ever wanted is available. You can get it all. You can get it all. You can have it all. You can have it all. Yes, I'm showing you how to get and to have everything you ever wanted. You can have it all. So now let me look at something else I think you might want in your life. I've shown you how to receive, how you can, um, I've shown you how you can get power for everything you want in your life, how you can get power. I've shown you how you can get the blessing that will make you rich. If you want to be rich, I've shown you what to do to be rich. You see, these are true, but the question is, would you do it? Because if you really want to be rich, this is the path to it. The question is, would you do it? And I said in my last broadcast, why people don't have what they want is because they go about it the wrong way. That I would, I would just revise that. They go about it the wrong way. Number two, they are unwilling to pay the price required for what they want. They are unwilling to do what is necessary. You know, uh, number three, they refuse to accept the truth about how to get what they want. Like I've shown you now how you can be blessed, you how you can be rich, how you can have wealth and riches in your house. Would you accept the truth? Some are more interested in just going through the motion than actually getting what they want. They just want to go through the routine. You know, they want to have activity without result so that people can say, I'm busy. No, no, no. Just be a ghost striker. Go to the heart of it. Follow the part of it. And you're going to get it. Some want to justify themselves. Oh, I can do it better. I, I have a way, you know, I can do it better. Like the man, I think I talked about the man, um, the leper that went to a prophet, the, the Syrian general who was a leper, who went to the prophet Elisha. He was leprous. And, he, you know, they told him if he get to Samaria, you know, where the prophet is, he can be, he can be cleansed of his leprosy. And he went, and when he got there, the prophet didn't come out to speak to him, but the prophet gave him a, a supernatural instruction. He told him, go and dip yourself seven times in Jordan and your flesh is going to be clean. The man, I thought he wanted to be cleansed, but the Bible says he went away in a rage. He was angry. He didn't, he was, he, 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 he was angry. He now began to say, are there not better rivers where I came from? He, you know, couldn't have go there and be deep. And the man, the prophet didn't even come out to see me, you know, so he was angry. So the reason people don't already have what they want is because they would rather justify themselves than get what they want. You know, you can say, oh, I know other ways. I know this, but you can't know better than God. And God is saying, look, I am your source. I'm your helper. I'm the one, you know, that supply every good thing that can supply every good thing in your life. Whatever you want. I can make it happen. That's why I said all every good gift 
Every gift and every perfect gift, every good gift comes from God. So God is the source. God recognize him. Then he said, if I can make you rich and add no sorrow in your life, what do you need to be rich without sorrow? It says to fear the Lord, to delight in his commandment, and to do his good pleasure. That's it. Now, let me take you to another thing here that God is, the Holy Spirit is pushing me on. Let me go on. What if you can enjoy, you can have and enjoy peace that surpasses all understanding? What if you can have and enjoy peace that surpasses, you know, or surpasses all understanding? The peace that surpasses all understanding. What if you can have and enjoy such dimension of peace? peace in your life you know uh many people don't have peace in their life they are they have internal agitations they are full of uh anxiety worry you know their life is under pressure but you can have peace peace that surpasses all human understanding inexplicable peace peace is actually not an absence of uh, external pressure. Peace is having rest in the midst of the pressures of life. You can have peace in the midst of the pressures, the agitation, the tribulation, the storms of life. You can still be peaceful. So how, what if it is possible? What if you can have and enjoy peace that, have, that passes all understanding? Will you go for it? Yes, you can. How can you have peace? John chapter 14, verse 27 Jesus said, and I want to read the scripture here. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. So there is the peace that you need in your life. Jesus said, my peace I live with you. Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the word giveth, I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled and neither you know, uh, let it be afraid. So Jesus is saying, "I'm Jesus is the Prince of Peace. In fact, that's his name. Is the Prince of Peace. So Jesus is saying, look, I give you peace. I give you peace. How do you enjoy this peace? To know that with Jesus in your heart, you don't have to be afraid. Yeah, you don't have to be afraid. One of the things Jesus will always tell his disciples is, fear not. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. He has overcome the wall. Be not afraid. I have overcome the wall. Don't tremble. Don't be afraid. Don't let your heart be troubled. Have confidence in God. That's how you're going to walk in peace. You know why you're living in, why you, why you might have fear, anxiety, and worry? is because your confidence in God is shaken. Your trust in God is wavering. But Jesus said, I give peace unto you. So you can say to yourself, I have Jesus in my heart. I can have the Prince of Peace in my heart and not have peace in my life. You see, I said to you, you have to, God has his ways. Just accepting that, look, Jesus is in your life, is in your boat. To take care of you, it will eliminate fear. It will eliminate anxiety. And I pray and I prophesy and end to every fear and anxiety in your life in the name of Jesus. And if it's something you want in your life, the Bible says, watch this. It, I mean, the, the Bible says, look at it here now. It says, if it's something you want in your life, it says, be anxious about nothing. Don't allow yourself to fret. Don't fret, don't sweat. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4, I want to read the scripture to you. Philippians, that's what you have to, I told you, you have to know what God says in his word so that you can, this is the part of life. The scripture is the man, the Bible is the manual for, you know, triumphant living, victorious life. The Bible is the manual for victorious living. You have to know the content of it. It's not a religious book. It shows you the way of life. Look at what it says in Philippians chapter 4. Glory to God. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. It says, 
Be careful for nothing. Be anxious about nothing. Don't worry. Don't fret. Don't sweat about anything. But what am I going to do if I'm not if I'm not going to worry? Because some people are they are they are world 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 wide winner warriors. <laughs> Worldwide winner warriors. You know, www, they, they have the belt for worrying. Say, so what am I going to do if I don't worry? Because some people think worry changes things. Worry does not change anything. Worry does not change anything. So what am I going to do in the place of worry? He said, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. You see that? Jesus is in it all. So if you're not going to worry, what are you going to do? Pray. Pray about everything. Pray. Pray by prayer and supplication. You cry out to God. You talk to God about it. Give him thanks for him being your source. This is the, this is the way to live a worry-free life. In everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. You see, that's why God, as your source, recognizing him as your source, will give you confidence. Oh my God. I think I woke up this morning with a powerful revelation on the potency of communion with God in the place of prayer. The greatest power, the greatest uh, tool of victory that God has given unto us is the channel of prayer. Prayer is pursuing God. Prayer is conversation with God. And if you can talk to God about the, the need, the desires, the dream in your life, God will make it happen. The word of God says in 1 John, he said, this is the confidence, 1 John 13 and 14. He said, this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, then we have the petition that we have desired of him. So when you pray, you can have everything you want when you pray. And that is what will bring peace. Why are you anxious? You are anxious. You are worried. You are fearful. People tremble because of what they want and they don't know how to get it. But here in Philippians chapter 4, it says, be careful. Don't fret. Don't sweat. Don't worry. Don't be filled with anxiety. What am I going to do? Pray. Talk to God about it. He hears. And if he hears, then you know it's going to make it good. It's going to fix it. It's going to make it right. It's going to handle it. It's going to take care of you. Yeah. It's going to take care of you. So don't fret. Don't worry. Don't be full of anxiety. Oh, my God. That's the key right there. So you can enjoy peace in your life. And I prophesy, I pray and I prophesy that the peace of God that passes all understanding will fill your heart and your mind. Glory be to God. I want, I'm looking at my time. I want to pray for you. I want to pray with you before I go because, you know, I, I just spent one hour with you. I'm going to continue this powerful uh this powerful broadcast, this teaching, I'm going to how to get what you want. I'm going to show you some other things on how to get them. If you're going to follow the way, you know, the way of life, I'm going to show you how to get what you want. But I want to pray for you right now before I go. I want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you before I go. Yes, I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray with you and I want to pray for you. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. Before I go, yes. Thank you, Mary God. Let me have this now. Yeah, I want to pray for your desires. I want to pray for your miracle. Right now, before I go, we're going to continue this teaching, but I want to pray for you right now. If you are watching right now and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you are not born again. Before I pray for, you know, the power, I'm going to pray that you're going to assess power. You're going to assess wealth and riches. You're going to assess the peace. So give, stay there. Don't move, a, don't move a muscle. But let me pray for you right now. 
to receive Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and your Savior. I want to pray. Yes, I want to. I want to. I want you to uh, be reconciled with God. I want to. I want you to make peace with God. I want you to make peace with God. I want you to say with me. The Word of God says, "Hear this." It says, "Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved." So you can be saved today. You can make peace with God, and you can have access to God and begin to receive everything that God can make happen in your life. So say this prayer right where you are. Say, "Lord Jesus, today." I call upon your name. I ask you to come into my heart. Say, say, I ask you to come into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior. Say, I believe you died for me and you rose again for my justification. So today, I surrender my life to you. Come into my heart and save me. Jesus, I surrender and I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, God, for saving me. In the name of Jesus Christ, glory to God, glory to God. If you said that prayer, congratulations. It means you just became born again. Now you are a child of God. Now your sins are forgiven. Now you have come into the family of God. And I rejoice with you. Or maybe you have said that prayer before, but you drew back. But today you want to reconnect. There's a, a, a guy in scripture referred to as the prodigal son. He said, look, I'm going to return to my father. If that is you, just say, Lord, I'm returning to you today. I'm returning. I've tried to go my way, but I found out that my ways are not helping me. I'm not ashamed to return to you today. Say, Lord, I come to you today and I ask you to forgive me and help me to start anew in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you said that prayer, whether you gave your life to Christ now or you just said that prayer and you rededicated your life, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray with you. But I you know, I want I'm going to pray for you right now. I want you to I want to pray for you. Father Lord, I pray for this person who has given his or her life to Christ, who has submitted his or her life, who has accepted you today. I pray that this person's sins are forgiven. I pray that you give this person a new beginning. I ask that you write this person's name in the book of life. Let your grace that saved this person keep this one. That person that returned to you, I thank you for putting your arm of embrace around that person, oh God, and welcoming that person home. Let there be a feast in the life of that person, a feast of miracle and blessings in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory be to God. Please, if you said that prayer with me, I want to I want to to let me know you said that prayer. You know, it's it will encourage me that you said that prayer. And number two, I want to send some materials to you that will help you in your work with God. So email me or inbox me on Facebook. Or if you want to text me, the number is there anywhere you are in the world. I want I'm going to do three things. I'm going to send the material to you that will help you to know God more, to grow in your work with God. Number two, I'm going to commit to praying for you, praying for you so that your relationship will be strengthened. And I want to walk side by side with you in your work with God. I want to help you to grow to know God more. So send me an email, inbox me on Facebook, or text me. Let me know you gave your heart to the Lord or you said that prayer, and it will be a blessing to you in Jesus' name. I want to pray for, now I want to pray for your miracles. I want to pray for your need in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for your miracles right now. Whatever you, whatever miracle you need in your life, I want to pray right now. The first thing I want to pray, that the power of God, the power of God that gives us on that gives all things that pertain to life and godliness. I'm praying that God will empower you from this moment. Somebody say power. Say it's a power. Receive the power of God to have all things in your life that pertains to life and godliness. Receive that empowerment. May that power come into your life from this moment. In the name of Jesus, I send the word of his power into your heart, into your life, into your situation. Receive it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Power to get, power to become is available to you from this moment in the name of Jesus Christ. I also want to pray that the grace of God will come upon you to be able to obey God's command, to walk in his precept so that the blessings that make rich and add no sorrow can become your portion. So receive grace for obedience. Receive grace. It's not by power. It's not by might, but the grace of God. I pray for sufficiency of grace for you from this moment. 
to obey God. And as you begin to obey him, to delight in his great, delight greatly in his commandment. May you begin to experience the blessings that make rich and add no sorrow. May wealth and riches overflow in your life and family. Receive it now in the mighty name of Jesus. I say receive wealth and riches in your house. In the might, your house will become a citadel of wealth and riches as you obey God. And I want to pray for the peace of God. Oh my God, the peace of God that passes all understanding to fill your heart. I come against worry. I come against anxiety in your life. I command that worry to cease. I command that anxiety to come to an end. Don't fret no more in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying for somebody. Somebody, you, are, you live in constant fear. There is constant fear. Your heart is always keeping. It's like you are afraid. But I want you to know that God has your future covered. I said God has your future covered. God says, fear not, I will help you. Fear not, I will make the crooked path straight before you. What you couldn't do by yourself, I see God going ahead of you to make it happen. The help of God comes upon you. That fear, that heart palpitation stops now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. And I want to pray for your healing. I want to pray for your healing. I feel there's a great healing anointing here. If you are sick in your body right now, I want to pray for your healing. In the name of Jesus, I command sickness to go from your life. I command sickness to go in the name of Jesus. Yes, that migraine, go. I command migraine to go in the name of I see. I hear God saying, is healing migraine, constant headache. Go in the name of Jesus. That ear pain. That pain in your ear, yes, your eardrum, I think the left ear, it doesn't matter the left or the right, but God is healing your ear right now. But essentially, I feel the left ear, God is healing your ear right now. Receive your healing in your ears in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Oh, I give you praise. I give you glory. Thank you, mighty God. Receive your healing right now. I begin to speak to you now prophetically. I prophesy in the name of Jesus everything you want comes into your life. Everything you desire become your portion. I speak prophetically to you that everything will work in your favor in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, say, I receive it. I receive it. Please share your testimony with me. Let me know what God has done for you. If you can still hear me, let me, if you want to type out your testimony, sh let me hear it now or inbox me. Let me hear from you. Let me know what God has done in your life. So share your testimony. Let me know what God has done for you. Or email me if you want to do that. Before I go, I want to give you an opportunity also um, to plant your financial seed, to give you know, uh, a good offering today to the work of God to help me to continue to do what God has called me to do. So I want to give you an opportunity. The word of God says, if we have ministered to you spiritual things, we ought to reap your kind of thing. So if you want, I want you to give a good offering today. Anywhere you are in the world, you can give an offering. If this message has been a blessing to you, I want you to sow. The word of God says, when you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. God will cause men to give to your bosom. So I want you to plant into this ministry. If we have ministered to you spiritual things, we ought to reap your kind of things. That's how God blesses you. When you give, God's going to multiply the seed soon. God gives seed to the sower. Anywhere you are around the world, you can give your offering. If you go to our website, hoffan.org, H-O-F-F-A-N.org, it's right there. Click the give button. Or if you want to give by cash app, all those information, they're available on the website. If you want to text to give, text the amount you want to give to that number on your screen, 770-659-7713. And watch God bless you. Every seed you sow is going to come back into your heart, into your life as a mighty harvest. So sow today and watch God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So give your offering and then God will bless you in Jesus' name. I also want to invite you to come and worship God with us. Yes, come and worship God with us. Um, you know, we have, we are, we are, in fact, we are global right now. Anywhere you are in the world, you can join our services. If you go to our website, Excuse me, if you go to our website, hoffan.org, you can join our services on Sunday, on uh, Bible study on Wednesday. Our times are Eastern, so you can join our services. You can join us on Zoom. You know, go to the website, hoffan.org, find out our service time, and come and be a part of our service. If you're in the USA, 
and you are in the Atlanta metro area, we have two powerful locations in the Atlanta metro area. We have a location in Smyrna and uh, Peachtree uh, Corners, Norcross. We have another location there. So come and be a part of our service. Go to the website, get the information. We'll be glad. We're going to love on you. I'll be glad to have you come in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. I want to trust that you have been blessed today. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again uh, next time. I'm always on by the grace of God every Tuesday at uh, 7, I mean, every Tuesday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern and 8.30 p.m. GMT. I look forward to seeing you again on my next broadcast. Thank you for staying with me. God bless you. I see you all and I appreciate you all for being a part of this broadcast. Glory be to God. I think I see some other joiner here. Let me just give them a holler here. Uh, Ajete Sowa, God bless you. Where are you watching from? Ajete Sowa, God bless you. I hope I got your name right. Ajete Sowa, thank you. Let me know where you're watching from. Thank you, my wife, for being a part of this also. God bless you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Pastor Yemisi, for being here all through. God bless you, uh, Sister Joy. God bless you. Thank you all for being a part of this. I look forward to seeing you again next time. I, I, I keep sharing, keep loving, and let me hear your testimony until I come your way again next time. This is Bishop O. Olafe reminding you that Jesus loves you, and so do I. Shalom. God bless you. <laughs>